Hello you all. I am waiting for a student to arrive. I turned off my microphone to the classroom. So <laughs> if they watch the playback of this class, they're not listening about HCG. And I thought I'd do, I don't think this kid's going to show up because usually if they don't show up about 10 minutes and they're not going to come. So I have about uh, 15 to 20 minutes before my next class and um, I thought I'd go ahead and do a quick video. So this is what I said I was going to talk about today. I said that I was going to talk about um, some substitutions that you can do on the diet. Yesterday's video was the very strict Dr. Simeon's protocol from the original manuscript that Dr. Simeon's wrote back in the 1960s. Um, and then there are some variations that can go along with that. We're going to talk about that today. Let's get to numbers. I got on the scale today. I was nervous to get on the scale today because after I woke up, I just felt, you know that feeling like, after you've had a huge, huge, huge meal, like right before going to bed and you wake up and you almost feel like it's all the way up in your rib cage, like you just feel so full that your stomach feels like it's going up this way. <laughs> For all you females, it's what you feel like when you're in your whole um, third trimester of being pregnant because your stomach is like smashed up to your um, throat. Um, I felt like that when I woke up and I was very nervous because I had a very different kind of eating day yesterday. I had that bowl of turkey chili, which was only about a half a bowl. I remembered it was like completely full to the top, of which there's no room for croutons and um, shredded cheese. And when I had it before going on this diet, I like seasoned croutons and cheddar cheese in my chili. So I had taken half of the bowl and put it in another bowl to add the fun stuff. Um, so I was kind of excited about that when I looked at it. I'm like, oh, it's only a half a bowl. That's good. So I ate the chili and it was amazing. I did put two grassini sticks in it. Now I'm permitted two grassini sticks a day, one for each meal. So I thought, I'm so used to having the um, croutons and cheese in it. I did no cheese. I didn't do any mozzarella. You know, those first two days I kind of sprinkled a little mozzarella on my salad to kind of wean me into this diet. Um, I thought, no cheese in this. Just something to add that little bit of crunch, which was kind of nice actually. I don't need it if I were to do it again, but I don't have any more turkey chili in the house. I finished it up. I just didn't want it to go bad in the refrigerator. So I ate that up. I got some lettuce so I can go back on eating lettuce again today. And um, there is some strange noise going on in my house and I don't know what it is. I think both my husband and son are, yeah, they should both still be home. So I believe they're making the noise, but I don't know what it is. It's so bizarre. It kind of sounds like someone is taking a water and spraying down a shower curtain. That sounds, oh no, it's the vacuum cleaner. Interesting. Maybe it was broken and he's fixing it or something. Yeah, at 5.41 in the morning. Go figure. I will. Any, everyone's awake in the house. Um, happy he's vacuuming. I am not complaining. It is downstairs and I am upstairs. So, um, okay. Uh, so I had the two grassini sticks and the chili, and later in the day, I wanted more to eat. Now, I think this is because the amount of chili was really small. There's no way that I had seven ounces of protein in that. So in that regard, I wasn't too concerned. On the flip side of that, um, I had peanuts. I had a handful of, uh, peanuts that I ate, um, they weren't the cocktail peanuts. I noticed that the cocktail peanuts had more calories and fat in them last time I was at the store. So I got a big container of, um, not the honey roasted. I don't even like the honey roasted. I don't like sweet with my peanuts. Um, the dry roasted. I don't really understand how dry roasted works. So, I, I, you know, I don't know if that's a great choice or not. But I mean, it was pure protein, really, um, and no sugar. So um, I had um, two small handfuls over the course of, you know, kind of hours in the evening. I had one and then a few hours later I'm like I just need a little something else. So I had that too. So now I'm worried about that in addition to the fact that I normally drink water with artificial sweetener in it and I have about this much at the top of my Diet Cherry Pepsi which is something I used to drink morning, noon, and night for decades really. Um, I lived on it. I didn't drink tea, I didn't drink coffee, I didn't drink water, I didn't drink anything else. I had it by my bedside. If I woke up during the night, I'd take a slip. I'd have it before bed, I'd have it in the morning. I lived on Diet Cherry Pepsi. That all changed after my appendix ruptured and my surgeon told me 
I couldn't have that during my recovery and uh, and that it wasn't good for my life in general, which I knew. But, you know, once you get into a habit of taking something away, then good. All right, so I put about this much still at the top because it makes the whole thing kind of bubbly and it gives a little bit of that, a little bit of the flavor of, of the Diet Cherry Pepsi, but it is 90 plus, 95% water with the artificial sweetener. Um, yesterday, when I wanted to top it off, I don't want to use a whole nother artificial sweetener, but I also want, don't want to just add water because it really waters it down. So if I'm just trying to top it off, I will add more soda. And yesterday I found myself doing that multiple times. So I probably had at least a full one of these of soda, which you know has a lot of sodium in it. And sodium causes water retention. So I was very concerned about the scale this morning when I went to bed, not very concerned. I was curious, let's say that. I was curious about the scale this morning because um, I thought, oops, I just wanted to make sure he didn't show up. Nope, that's not him. Um, I thought I varied from what I typically do on the protocol, which is have a large salad once a day uh, with a possible protein snack later on. Um, because of the high salt on the peanuts and the high sodium in the soda and just the variation of eating different foods, um, I didn't know how my body was going to react. Then when I woke up this morning and I felt like I did, even more concerned. But fear not, the scale continued to go down and go down well. Um, this morning I got on the scale, I was still in the 170s of course, 170.8 and I had lost 1.9 pounds. Mm -hmm. I lost 1.9 pounds. It feels good. You know, yesterday I started to say, I started to say that by the weekend, by by the weekend, so like given, you know, tomorrow's way in, I would be in the 160s. And then I like pulled myself back and looked at the numbers and thought, I don't know if I'm going to lose almost three pounds in two days. I should on this diet, especially at the beginning of it, because this is when we kind of lose bigger numbers. Um, I've lost 4.5, 1.7, 1.9 in my first three days. Um, after loading, after loading. Um, but still, the numbers are bigger at the beginning, as they are with any diet. You know, your body's used to kind of having food at a certain amount, and then you um, start to restrict it, and it starts to uh, shed quickly. There does come a time, usually in the diet, where you hit a stall. But um, at this point, I am really the what I would in my brain call the first day on the diet because the first two days you load and then the next two days you basically lose what you've loaded. <laughs> so those first four days on the diet to me are really a wash and usually you start at ground zero from there. So that would have been yesterday morning. So today's weigh-in would have been my first actual weight loss. Um, so if I add that to where I was before I started loading, I'm down 2.1 pounds. So that's good. That's really good. I'm excited about that and I'm excited about going forward with this now. I'm very excited that tomorrow the scale will say 160 something. Um, and hopefully we can plow through these 60s pretty quickly. I'm praying, you know, I mentioned before, I'm over 50 now. Mm -hmm. I hit the 5 0. So things don't come off like they did when I was in my 20s or even my 30s um, or even my 40s. <laughs> So there we go. Okay. Oh, geez. I hope I have enough time to talk about my topic today. Uh, okay. I don't want to plow through anything, but here we go. Um, one of the chain, the one of the substitutions that you are allowed. Now, actually, this is in the protocol, but I didn't want to talk about any of the substitutions yesterday. So, in the actual protocol, one of the substitutions you can do is for a protein. Now, I mentioned all the meats. Go to yesterday's video if you want to see what are permissible meats on the diet um, according to the original protocol. In the original protocol, still you can substitute one of the proteins during the day for one egg and three egg whites. So you can make like scrambled eggs with one egg and three egg whites um, and that can be your protein for the day. And then um, another option if you don't like eggs or you want a variety in a different way is that you can have 100 grams of fat-free cottage cheese. 
not fan of cottage cheese, won't even try this, um, but I have tried the one egg with three egg whites as scrambled eggs for breakfast with a little bit of salt and you can put vegetables in it. You know, you can make it a pretty nice uh, meal. Now he does say to use it occasionally. What that means exactly, you know, he didn't quantify it, but this is not something you should be doing every day. So you shouldn't be having your first meal be eggs every day. But I would say you know, maybe twice a week, seems like, is occasionally. All right, what are other substitutions we can do? Okay, now with the modern times and with um, new technology and with doctors knowing more than they did back in the 60s, here are some substitutions that physicians have approved on the HCG diet as uh, these are physicians who have weight loss clinics that focus on um, the HCG protocol. Okay, proteins that they say are acceptable tuna, ahi tuna. I don't know if that's different from just all other tunas. It does say ahi tuna, so we'll see. 97% uh, fat-free ham, 99% fat-free ground turkey. Now that's hard to find, let me tell you, but I mean, I'm in the, I, I find it in the upper, most of ground turkey is pretty lean anyway, but I haven't found any that said specifically 99%. I'm sure it's out there, but you know, get close. Um, egg beaters, 200 grams of egg beaters, Greek yogurt, 200 grams, fat-free Greek yogurt you can have, uh, bison, if you want to grind up bison, have ground bison, you can have ground chicken as long as it's uh, again lean and a high percentage of, uh, of reduced fat, you know 95 plus um, reduced fat, let's see, uh, low-fat canned salmon. So salmon is not acceptable on this because it really is a high fat fish. Um, if you've seen previous videos, I do all, occasionally, well, some rounds often <laughs> have salmon in my salad as my protein. I just love salmon. Uh, but low fat canned salmon is acceptable. So I might try that on this diet and see how that goes. I don't have any, but I do have some canned chicken. No, oh, that's no good. I'll try canned salmon. Okay, um, low carb protein powder. So if you want that as your protein and you just want to eat vegetables and have like your protein drink as long as it's a low carb. Um, and then water packed tuna, so tuna in a can, as long as it's water packed and not oil packed. All right, vegetables that they are now saying are acceptable on this. It's a longer list, so this is exciting. Any color bell peppers, love those. Broccoli. I have broccoli in my house right now. We talked about that yesterday. Brussels sprouts, acceptable. Capers, I don't think of that as a vegetable, but I, okay. Uh, carrots, yay. I think of that as a higher sugar uh, food, but like now in the mixed vegetables that you can buy at the grocery store, I get my big one at Costco. I do all my shopping at Costco. Um, it has butternut squash, which I don't know if that's really acceptable, but there's only some of it in there. Uh, carrots and cauliflower and... Uh, broccoli and I love that for a variety um, instead of lettuce sometimes for salad just do that for mixed vegetables um, you can have cauliflower you can have oh you can have yellow squash it says crooked crook neck yellow squash I don't know if the squash had a crook neck because it's already chopped up and put into a mix <laughs> a bag of mixed vegetables but it says yellow squash so we're gonna say it's okay so my whole bag from Costco is okay uh, green beans are now okay. Jalapeno or other um, peppers are okay. Kale, okay. Uh, mushrooms, it says specifically button or shiitake mushrooms, but I would think just about any mushroom would be okay, quite frankly. Um, any kind of uh, mixed greens, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, you know, uh, pre-shredded green mixes that you get, you know, kind of like the coleslaw shredded mixes. Um, any sprouts, broccoli, bean, alfalfa sprouts, and zucchini, all okay. I mean, this really has expanded. Now they're also saying that there are additional fruits that you can have. Here we go. Are you ready? You can have two medium apricots, that's substantial, a half a cup of blackberries, a half a cup of blueberries, um, unsweetened raw cranberries. Uh, it doesn't taste very good that way. Dried ones taste good, but that's not acceptable. Um, a half of a peach or a half of a pear, one small plum, 
or between a half to a cup of raspberries. So those are all acceptable for your fruit. Again, you get two fruits a day on the protocol. Um, then any additional things that we can add on here. I'm going to read this list. I pulled this off um, online. I think this is from the gal who um, really does a lot of research. Her name is H.C. Chica. And uh, she does some great stuff. So I believe this was her site. And I have to go really quick. So I'm just going to read. You know what? We'll do this tomorrow. There's too many. We're going to review other savory things that we can eat. Um, extra baking ingredients if you're baking something that you can put in. And um, like uh, other like sauces or condiments or spices that weren't mentioned yesterday. Okay? So that is going to be tomorrow. Let me write that down. Uh, sauces, spices, condiments, etc. We'll talk about those tomorrow because I have to go teach another child right now. All right. And that keeps it nice and sweet and short for you <laughs> so you don't get bored of me. All right. There we go. Excited to see how tomorrow goes. Back to a salad today since I've got it in the house. And um, looking forward to the 160s tomorrow. Woohoo! I shouldn't be that excited about it, but I am. I am. I should just celebrate every everything, not everything. Let's just celebrate everything and be grateful that things are going the way they're supposed to be. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Have fun on your diet. Enjoy all the variations that you can now add to it to make it more doable and palatable um, and sustainable. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.